We're turning now to read the, the precious and infallible Word of the living God. And we're opening our Bibles at the 14th chapter of Luke's Gospel. Luke's Gospel, at chapter 14. 14th chapter of Luke's Gospel. And we are reading from the verse 15 to the verse 24. Verse 15, the 14th chapter of Luke's Gospel. And one of, one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things. He said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and be it many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me and another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the Lord said, and the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. But I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Amen. And God will seal this reading of his holy, infallible word to all our hearts in Jesus' name. I take the promised Holy Ghost. The blessed power of Pentecost to fill me to the uttermost, I take. Thank God he undertakes for me. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 I was greatly struck during the past days on this portion of Scripture, which we had for our Scripture lesson reading tonight. And I noticed a very interesting thing, that three decisions, all registered on a small piece of paper. The Lord Jesus Christ did it that they would bar forever heaven's doors against those that had committed the acts that are recorded in this portion of Scripture. If you look at Luke's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 18, you'll read there these words, And they all, 
with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excuse. A small piece of paper, the title deeds of a piece of ground. Then, secondly, in verse 20, we read, And another said, I have, no, verse 19, And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. A small piece of paper, the receipt for ten oxen. And last of all, in verse 20, And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. A small piece of paper, a marriage certificate, which death parts. Notice the scripture. A certain man, a certain man made a great supper and bid many. God Almighty is this certain man. There is nothing uncertain about his character or person. He is a God who in the fullness of time sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Christ is presented in the form of a servant. And so are all whom he sends to invite men and women to the great supper that he has prepared. That great supper is the gospel supper. The things now ready are the gospel feast, the bread of gospel creation, and the wine of gospel making. Already note that heavenly joys are always spoken of in the scriptures under the image of feasting. So this was to be a time of joy. Alas, we hunger not enough for gospel feasting. When in the great eternity, in the great beyond after time, all that the heart ever contemplated will be surpassed by the feasting of everlasting joy in heaven. This invitation, please note, has eternal finality about it. Come for all. It is all inclusive. Come for all things are now ready. There is no doubt about it that the feast is prepared. But we are next introduced to the sinful and ungrateful conduct of those invited. Notice there was an unholy alliance of those who received the royal invitation. They all with one consent began to make Excuse. Oh, the folly of men who are offered heaven without money and without price, who are offered the pardon and forgiveness of all their sins, who are offered the guarantee 
of heaven for all eternity. And yet they combine together in ingratitude to refuse such an invitation. The invitations are all disregarded. Baseless excuses are offered by those who were so signally honored by receiving those invitations. Look right at the head of the queue. And what do we find? The first rejecter. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22 and verse 5, those same words, a piece of ground, is translated a farm of land. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Land. What is wrong with having land? Nothing. Oxen. What is wrong with having oxen? Nothing. A wife? What is wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. Land, oxen, wife, all innocent, all needful, all legal, but alas, in all these certain these circumstances, fatal to the eternity of the soul. The love of them swept away all love for the great supper and the author of that great supper. The other loves divided their hearts. They couldn't love God with all of their hearts. God will not have any dealings with a divided heart. Jesus said unto him in another place in the gospel, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul and with all of thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Note carefully that Christ lists the very same things on which he carefully mentions in speaking of the corruption of the days of the old world. And as Christ described the world that was to be overthrown in the flood of Noah's day, he said they bought and sold. Compare with the words, I have bought five yoke of oxen. They planted and they built it. Compare with the words, I have bought a piece of ground. Again in the days of Noah they married and were given in marriage. Compare with the words, I have married a wife. All of these are characterized by the world and its possession and how we possess the things of the world. Mark how the servant came and showed these offenders to the master. And the master of the house was angry. And he said, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, 
those who possess no life. The maimed and the halt who could not buy or sell. And the blind who could not see a wife, even if they had one. Go out and get them all. And he said, I am going to bring them all in. When thou makest a feast, the Lord says in verse 13 of this chapter, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of these men which were bidden shall even taste, shall not even get a taste of my supper. No taste. The sovereign God pass his judgment. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing if this night Sovereign Lord passed judgment on you and decreed that you would never taste of the banquet of God in heaven. How true this came about in the history of the Jewish people. The Jews rejected the gospel. The publicans and the harlots were straightly brought in from the streets and lanes of the city. And yet there was room. And what did God do? He ordered Paul and Barnabas to leave the Jewish people in their darkness and to go and speak to the Gentiles. Then Paul and Barnabas, Acts 13, 46, waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turned to the Gentiles. Christ turns away from those that reject his invitation. Notice Christ says, I say unto you, None first bidden will partake of my supper. Like the rich man, they shall not escape the ire and torments of hell. Like Esau, there will be found no place for repentance for them. Though they seek it earnestly with tears. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. The gospel of this world is a religion. Religion, the sense of Almighty God, is a boundless destiny. And in man's experience, there is the urge within him by God's grace to come and worship the Most High God. The mightiest facts in history are bound up with religion. If it is true religion, it brings glory and honor to the one and only true God. But much of religion is contaminated with man's fleshly lusts and fleshly desires. And so when you look out in the world at the religions of the world, you see nothing but evil sprouting forth, men going mad. Because they have left true religion and turned to a religion of their own making. 
every attempt to stump out false religion fails. Man goes on in his desperate enterprise of worshiping what he wants to worship, of taking the wrong road, of turning his back upon God's gospel, and following a gospel which is not good news, but bad news that takes men to destruction. There is only one deliverance, and that's in the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. No voice but thine, O Lord, can give me rest. No voice but then thine can give my make my fears depart. No love but thine can make me blessed. No love but thine can satisfy my heart. When I looked at this passage of Scripture the other night, I looked again at these excuses. Please notice they are all totally unjustifiable. What fool would buy a piece of ground before he saw it? What could he do if he discovered some awful insufficiencies? But the purchase is already made. He could do nothing. This man, instead of going to see his property, should have taken a good look at himself. If he had even a titter of wit, he would have acknowledged his utter folly and it would have welcomed this invitation to join the guests at the feast prepared by the great man. Alas, he showed himself to be a self-testifying idiot. Are you going to openly demonstrate that type of folly tonight? Everyone that refuses the gospel invitation is a fool. Soon as himself, man knows, He knows himself a fool. Yet, ah, how mad he grows if one but call him a fool. Man never likes to be indicted as a fool. He thinks he's a wise man, but he's not. The second excuser speaks of the purchase of the yoke of oxen. Ten and all, which he had just made. And he said he had to go and prove them. He is idiot number two. He was in no fit condition until he was first himself fit and proved he was a capable plowman. What good is the best yoke of oxen when the man that's trying to use them is a fool. The man himself must first be proved. He is also another self-declared fool. Every unapproved recipient is most certainly a fool. Unproved soul, your doom is sure. In another scripture, the oxen plowing is a type of the law of God in operation. Note the number. Five yoke of oxen. Five yoke of oxen. That is ten oxen. Two in each yoke. There are ten commandments in the whole law of God. Man cannot prove the law. It is a law which proves man. What a fool he is who has not enough submission to let the law prove him rather than pretend that he can prove it. This man is a fool indeed. The third excuser speaks of his recent marriage. 
And because of that, he refuses to come to the supper. A man and a woman are made one in marriage. So why did this man not say to his wife, let's go together? Alas, he used her as an excuse, and in doing so he brought both of them down to doom and damnation. I have a memory of a gospel service that will never be erased from my mind. In the early days, I was having a great mission in Rough Island. We started in the smallest hall in the town. We finished in the largest church building. Scores of people were converted to Christ. But one night as I preached, a man, two seats from the back, on the right side of the church, I can see him now, raised his hand response to a gospel invitation and then suddenly I noticed a woman's hand raised beside him and catching him by the arm and forcing his arm and hand down again I left the pulpit I went down the aisle and as the people sang the gospel invitation hymn, I spoke to that man. But the woman beside him, his wife, called me not to speak to him. Don't you dare speak to my husband, she said. He's not going to be saved. And we're not coming back to these services. When that woman pulled down the hand of her husband. She pulled him and herself down to hell. They left in the darkness and in the shadow of death. I remember well the words of the famous poet. It springs to my mind. No place so sacred from such from such fools is barred. Nor in Paul's church is it more safe than Paul's churchyard. Nay, fly to altars and talk about the dead, for fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Are you treading that dangerous road? tonight let me say to you others can encourage you to go down the broad road others can encourage you to run in the road that's down to hell they will drag you into hell but remember they will never drag you out of hell they will destroy your soul, but in no way can they lend a hand to its redemption. Three small pieces of paper we started with. Them. We started with that piece of paper, which was a title deed to a piece of ground. We went on to look at a receipt for ten oxen. And then we went on to look at a marriage certificate. Those three small pieces of paper sign the death warrant and the damnation warrant for those that reject the Son of God and put him to an open shield. Beware, sinner, tonight that you don't barter your life for a moment of gain. That you don't barter your life for some selfish 
and some evil thing. But you turn by the Spirit and mercy is pleading. And you steer for the harbor bright. But how do you know but your soul may be drifting over the deadline tonight. I'd rather be among the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind than be with those that gambled their life and sold their soul for the pleasures of this world. May God write these stern truths upon our heart. And may every man and woman here flee from the wrath that is to come and trust Christ alone for their eternal pardon and everlasting peace. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank Thee for Thy Word. Thy Word is truth. Write it upon our hearts. And may men and women here who are lost heed the stern warning from Thine own blessed lips, Lord Jesus. And may they turn to Thee with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind leaning not to their own understanding, but in all of their ways to acknowledge Thee, and Thou shalt direct their paths to the cross, to the blood that cleanseth, to the promise that seeth, and to the robe that gives entrance to the land that is fairer than day. Hear our simple prayer. For Jesus' sake, and the people of God said, Amen.